In this video, we will discuss our forms recognition and processing functionality. In short, forms recognition is the ability to recognize that a document is a particular known form. Forms processing is the ability to extract information from specified areas of a known form. I'll first discuss our forms recognition functionality and then our forms processing. Our forms recognition functionality works by identifying certain attributes of an image. We have three aspects of the image that we look for when attempting to identify a form, markings, words, and barcodes. For instance, in the image seen here, we might label these attributes as identifying attributes for this form. The default attributes which come with the recognition engine are lines and shapes. To identify words on the image, you would need to use one of our OCR engines. We have three engines to choose from, allowing you to maximize cost versus features. To identify barcodes, you would need one of our barcode modules. We support reading 1D linear, 2D data matrix and PDF, and QR barcodes. For the next sections, I will use our forms recognition demos. You can find the demos by browsing to your lead tool shortcuts. Select .NET class libraries, .NET framework, document, and forms recognition. In here, you'll find all the demos for our forms recognition and processing. We'll use the master forms editor first. You can pick and choose which attributes of the form you want the recognition engine to search for by enabling the corresponding object manager. Each attribute is linked to an object manager. We have an OCR manager, a barcode manager, and a default manager, which is always included in identifying the image. If you know your forms will always contain a barcode identifying the form, then you only need to use the barcode manager. The fewer object managers you have enabled, the faster the recognition will occur. Once the attributes of a form have been identified, we store them in an encrypted XML file for both single and multi-paged forms. This way, you do not have to store the actual image of the form, but only the XML attributes file. We refer to these stored XML attributes as a master form since it is the form you wish to have identified. We refer to a collection of master forms as a master form set. Even though you do not need to store the original forms, we suggest that you do in case any adjustments need to be made to the form at a later time. Now let's run the forms demo to see the recognition at work. We'll select one of the filled out forms we have provided with our toolkit. During the recognition process, we create attributes for the document that needs to be identified and compare its attributes with the stored XML attribute files. If the comparison is above a threshold, we deem it a match. When recognizing a form, the form that needs to be identified may be scanned with a different bits per pixel, resolution, scaling, or offset. In all cases, our recognition will still be able to identify the image. We're also able to tell you which page in the master form the identified form belongs to. Because of this flexibility, you do not need to have a specific workstation designated for our form's recognition. You can use any workstation and any scanner and will be able to identify the scanned document. Once a form is identified, we can then begin to extract information from the form. This is known as forms processing. We can process machine printed text, numbers, and symbols, and handwritten text and numbers. We can process marks such as check marks, X's, and filled in bubbles. And we can also process 1D data matrix and QR barcodes. If a particular portion of the form is none of the above data, such as a logo, ID photo, or signature, we allow you to specify the area, and we return that portion of the form to you as an image. 
In order for our forms processing to pull this data from the form, you must specify where in the form to read the data and what type of data we should expect. You can label the data with names specific to the form's data, such as name, social security number, date of birth, and so on. We then take this information and store it as a separate XML file from the recognition XML file and use it later to read the data from the form. After the data has been extracted, we then give it to you in an object you can parse. We'll associate the name you gave the data and provide the result. To help you create your own forms recognition and processing application, we have provided very high-level classes to make it quick and simple. In our help file, we provide an FAQ to help you get started. As you can see, we have many questions, each answered with code snippets. We can actually write our own forms recognition and processing application using just the first five code snippets. Let's take a look. The first question is how to create a master forms repository object. We'll use this to compare with unrecognized forms in order to identify them. Next, we'll create an auto forms engine that can work in multiple threads. By default, the shapes and lines object manager is already added. If you wish to use the OCR or barcodes to identify the form, you'll have to add instances of these engines to the auto forms engine as we do in this sample code. We add the same number of OCR instances as the number of threads we have available. It is recommended to use no more than one OCR instance per core for your processor. Here, we let our AutoForms engine determine the best minimum confidence value to use to determine if a match has been found. And finally, we attempt to identify the form and process its data once identified. I have already created a project which has this code implemented. I added a little more code to display the results. Here I loop through each page adding the name of the field and the results found in the field to a list view so we can see the results. Let me also run through the list of references you'll need to run this application. First we have the leadtools.dll which is our core DLL. Next, we have the leadtools.barcode.dll, which provides our barcode interface. We next have the leadtools.codex, which allows all I.O. operations, and the file filters, which allows you to load TIFF files with fax compression. The leadtools.forms.auto DLL contains our auto forms engine. The document writers DLL is simply here to allow the creation of the OCR interface. The leadtools.forms.ocr DLL contains our OCR interface. And because we're using the professional engine, we need the leadtools.forms.ocr.professional DLL. And finally, our leadtools.forms.processing DLL allows us to parse the results of the form. Let's now run the application to see the results. You can see the names of the fields in the left column and the results that were found for each field in the right column. As you saw in our video, our installation includes sample applications with source code to each you can compile and step through. Our help file contains sample code and overviews explaining how all the class objects work together. We also offer free technical support via email, user forums, and chat for our evaluating and licensed customers. For more information about Lee Tools and Lee Technologies, please visit our website at www.leadtools.com. Thanks for watching.